Do people often tell you that you are really confident and you don't actually really feel it on the inside or you kind of wonder about what it is they see? Or do you spend your time thinking you'd like to be confident and watching other people and thinking how do they do it? If you'd like to find out a bit more about how to be more confident, then stick around. Hello, my name is Elfrida Manahan Vaughan of Metamorphics and I created this series of videos because I've spent my life working with people who think there's something wrong with them because of how they feel. I've been one of those people myself. I had 36 years of trauma and and when I eventually came out the other side, I realized all the things I experienced in my life were totally freaking normal considering what I had been through. Now, one of the things that is one of my favorite subjects is the subject of confidence, because I've spent 25 years working with people to help them to develop their confidence. I started out as a drama communications teacher and I taught people the skills of performance, how to be effective public speakers, how to stand up on a stage and perform in a play. And I often wondered why these people had these skills, could do these things, and yet were still frightened. And so it caused me to look into a lot of things in psychology and start to question, well, why is it that we can act in a particular way that other people perceive as confident and not feel it ourselves? I started to understand was that a huge amount of it is about trust. It's about trusting yourself, but not just trusting yourself, but trusting yourself to cope. And so when I started to really explore my own confidence, I realized that part of the reason that I acted confident but didn't feel it was that I knew how to behave and I knew I had the skills of how to perform, but I had an expectation of success. I had an expectation of it going really, really well. And I wasn't really focused on planning how to handle it if things didn't work out or how to cope. I wasn't focused on getting better. I was focused on getting it right. And that's a bit of a, a fixed mindset where you're focused on being the best rather than focusing on improvement. Now, when I started to change that and I, and I started to change it in the way I taught, I said to people, well, you need to start to think about, well, what if it does go wrong and how will you handle that? And what if it isn't perfect? Can you be okay with that? I know my own mindfulness training supported me in changing this for myself, but it was the understanding that it is not that we have the skills or that we have the competent, competence that gives us confidence. What gives us confidence is knowing that we will be okay. Now, as I got older and the more assured I became in myself and the more I was less concerned about looking stupid or making mistakes, the more my confidence seemed to come from underneath. I know from working in the field of post-traumatic growth that many of the clients who come to me will talk about how after their growth they became fearless and that they had this confidence that wasn't a mask, that wasn't just on the surface. And that to me is the real key. It's getting to the place where you realize, I'll be okay. It doesn't matter if something goes wrong because I'll be fine. And when our focus is on that, when our focus is on doing okay and being okay with whatever the outcome, then the confidence starts to arrive. It's the setting of self, ourselves up for perfection, for potential failure that makes us worry. When we worry about having to do it right or be the best, then the confidence can often be superficial. So if you want to develop greater confidence, then you need to look at how to do what it is that you do that you probably do well but be okay with the learning behind making mistakes be okay with not being liked be okay with the fact that you might get negative feedback because if our motivation is intrinsic and it's about ourselves and our feelings and what we want then it becomes less about the extrinsic validation or the reward or the praise from other people. So if you can do something and think, I'm really happy with this, this is, this is good, or this is, this is what I expected of myself, then you'll feel confident. But if you're doing something and you're going, I need other people to tell me that I did okay, or you're looking for the praise, then you'll struggle with your confidence because confidence is about that trust, but it is very much about that intrinsic motivation and that internal locus of control, which is coming from inside us, not from that external validation and the look for praise. So very often when I used to teach years ago, people to perform on stage, they were looking for the applause, they were looking for the recognition. And if they didn't get it, then they would question themselves. But over time, when they started to talk about they just loved it and they enjoyed it and it wasn't about being great or being perfect, it was just about having fun, 
then they were less concerned. Most people, when they talk about confidence and I ask them, how do you know when you're confident? They'll usually say, it's because I'm not thinking about anything. But when they're nervous, they'll say, I'm worried about making mistakes. So if you want to feel more confident, begin to focus on your standards, your needs, your desires, what it is that you want to achieve. And the more you do that, do that, the less you'll be concerned about the negative feedback. You'll see it just as feedback and something that might be useful to help you to get better. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you'll watch some of my other videos. I'd love if you would subscribe to my channel or if not, to get in touch with me if you're interested in being supported in developing your confidence through my coaching or through any of my classes. You'll find my website below in, in the description of the video. And remember, no matter what you've been through in life, if you're still here, if you're still functioning, if you're still getting on with life, then it doesn't matter what happened before because under the circumstances, you're totally freaking normal.